I am Charlotte. This is Shane. This is life in a four wheel drive. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, over the last year that we have been doing these videos, we have had the request a couple times to do a walkthrough of the rig. But now that we've got the new canopy, it seems like we've finally got to just stop being lazy and do it. Yeah, we've actually got something to show off now, so it's, um, yeah, time to have a look around. So, Shane's going to show you through the canopy. I'm going to show you through the car and give you a bit of an idea as well on what we have packed for travelling around Australia. We are coming close to the 12-month mark now, so we have learned what we had to get rid of and mm. what was important. Yep, thin the herd. <laughs> you had to because the way we were building the canopy the second time it's kind of has given us more space but also less space in some other areas. So let's get started and show you through. All right, so starting off with the canopy, um, we'll have a look quickly underneath how it all, how it all works, how, how it is all put together. Um, Profab, everything they make is essentially custom made. So. Uh, on that note, if you want to see the build process, that should be up online now. Um, click the link, wherever it is, and uh, you can watch this come together start to finish. But just to recap it all, uh, this canopy is built without a tray, which is what Profab prefer to do to save weight and height. There's a number of sort of benefits, but the, the weight and the strength, I think, for us was the big reason that we uh, liked that. So underneath, you can sort of just see uh, where it's picked up the factory mount, so you've got the, there's three three mounts along here, um, all built specifically for these because obviously you know, each model is slightly different as you get newer. Uh, big heavy duty chassis rails there, which is essentially the the, the bones of the um, of the canopy. That's what holds it all together. Uh, guards, these are all folded again, custom to suit, so they're not just something that's pressed in a factory in China and sent out there. These are actually all done in-house. Um, welded up by the boys. Um, ours was a little bit different being an older vehicle, so the older models have a shorter wheelbase, which means that the guard uh, actually cuts into the body. So th they basically did this once everything was sitting on the car to get this extra fold in here, which I really like. It's a it's a definitely a unique feature and um, something that suits the car real well. Obviously, rather than just a you know a short end or something. Uh, toolboxes, same deal. So these are built to the length of the tray. This again isn't a standard length for Profab because of these older models, shorter wheelbase, lower GVM. Um, they they basically made it a little bit shorter. So it's pretty much the same dimensions as the old one. This toolbox, like I said, is uh, is all custom made. So um, yeah, just little compression lock fittings on the box and the waterproof seals, which not so important in here, but on the canopy, which we'll get to. Again, these are all folded up uh, in-house by the boys and all TIG welded inside and out. Uh, this side here we use for everything you see here, really. So <laughs> it's basically just water. Uh, water hose is the main one in our air system stuff, so it's got all the air compressor uh, hose and fittings, a few bits of tools, hand wash, random crap we couldn't put anywhere else. Big hammer, you always need them. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, obviously all key lockable with compression fittings. The old toolbox I had did use to leak a fair bit of dust and whatnot. These so far have been pretty good, so you can see all the seal makes a pretty good contact around here. Yeah, and that sort of flows in with the little the styling features that they do, um, which is a big benefit of, of going with a proper company. You know, things look a lot better. It, it, it obviously all matches up absolutely perfect and, and looks like it's supposed to be on the vehicle. If we go around the back, it's kind of involved in this. Yep. The tail lights, so they're the uh, auto LED auto lamps. They're sort of their flash ones, they do the, the whole sequence thing. They're all LEDs uh, and, and they're actually built into what is the back of the toolbox. So uh, that section there, toolbox finishes there, but that, that panel basically holds your lights. It's just fly on the camera. <laughs> which I think looks really good. <laughs> Uh, and then again, obviously custom as well. They they do a beaver panel to suit the vehicle, so that hides everything in behind, gives you provisions for your for your lights, uh, light mounts, number plates, and that sort of thing. On this one as well, it's going to be a bit hard to show you, but I've got the there's a 70 liter. You could see it actually coming in here. Yeah, you might see it in there. <coughs> so it's just there. Yeah, so that's an 80 liter uh, NMAC water tank. So NMAC's a 
just a business in uh, Bundaberg, I think, in Queensland there. So, yeah, they make all poly, poly water tanks from, you know, farms to, to car stuff. Really, really good quality. Uh, the way I had it fitted was just with two little gal angles and there's sort of nuts outs along the side. These guys being profab and how creative they are, they went one better and, and actually laser cut me out a bracket for it. So it's got two supports in underneath uh, and then it's all, yeah, sort of laser cut to meet each nut set. So not that you ever really get to see it, but it actually looks really good on its own. It's a bit of a work of art. So. This on the water tanks, we had to do this one a little bit differently. So the, the way I had it on the old canopy was uh, just like a filler tube that just ran down into it. Um, that filler tube sat between the body and the canopy. Profab tend to aim for um, about a 30 mil gap. So maximize space, bring the weight as far forward as possible, which is really important on these older vehicles with the lower GVM and the shorter wheelbase. So that meant that the filler just physically wouldn't fit. So what we did instead is we've run a, a T-piece under here, which goes, so the T-piece under there goes up to the pump and then one back out for a pressure inlet slash outlet. Which is just at the back here. Which is in the back there. So the just a normal garden hose connection fits straight on that. And it, um, it pressure fills through the middle. You can kind of see the breather. I don't know if it'll show up. Uh, this is how they normally fit their water tanks. Like they don't normally do these NMAC water tanks. They normally do like a headboard tank or, or actually fabricate one. Um, but this is how they normally do their breather. So it's just a, a big loop up in here. So it's actually, it's actually increased our capacity because it's raised the breather higher than I had it previously, which is good. So it's full 80 liters. The gas bottle. Yeah, so accessories on the back. Um, this is exactly how I had it on the old vehicle. It's just, I spent a lot of time working out the old canopy. I spent a lot of time working out on the old canopy exactly what we could get away with, how far we could push it. This is the biggest gas bottle I was happy to put on there. Spare wheel was, was it was a it was a big consideration. I wanted it up from under the car so it was easier to get to and obviously for a track pack on the back and a um, jerry can holder which we'll get to. Yep. So this just went fitted on same same way, just bolts straight through. They reinforced the skin in behind here and the uh, spare wheel carrier. So it's not just a skin, I think it's 10 mil plate or something in behind the spare wheel. Mm. Um, and they've actually fabricated a, a whole new carrier. So I just had a generic one on there before. Chris sort of looked at it and went, nah, we can make one. <laughs> it looks heaps better uh, and works better, which it does. So they actually turned up a bit of um, I don't know if it's Teflon or something. I'm not 100% sure what that is. It's a hard plastic of some description. Yeah, uh, so which used to be a big steel plate. Yeah, it was just a steel plate. So they, they've actually, yeah, put that on the lathe and, and made that up so it fits the center bore of the wheel and looks a lot nicer, it works a lot better. Covered by the track back all the time. Yeah, it definitely works better. Can't see it, but it does work better because <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a spring washer, so it, it, it compresses and holds it in there so it doesn't come loose. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, that's all more detail than the other video. So to go inside, uh, well, yeah, morning. first first things, um, yeah, we obviously run an awning like every other four wheel drive. But it is one of the things that we would like to upgrade or get bigger. Yeah, yeah, awnings are important. Whether you go camping or just go to the Coles and Bunnings car parks, every four wheel drive has an awning. <laughs> this uh, this one's good. It's just it's just a straight pull out two meter awning. So it, it works if you it's need good it. for the sun, but it's not great if it's really yeah, raining. If it's really horrible weather, like we had a lot in Tassie, it doesn't do a lot. <laughs> so a 270 would be nice, but hey, you can't have everything. Uh, it fits on here really well. Uh, they, they basically just remounted it directly to the roof rack, which you'll be able to see better on the other side. Mm. Um, but yeah, it does away with the right angle brackets that most awnings come with. So it's an extra, yeah, it removes a bracket, I suppose, and it fits it closer sits it better than it was on the old canopy so it's a lot easier to actually access and get to. Canopy itself, uh, everything's TIG welded as you'd see. Anyone who likes a bit of weld porn would be very, very happy with these. The old dime bags. Yeah, they're amazing. It's it's really good, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, these are all, yeah, every every little bit is, is done in-house. So they actually used to cut all these out by hand, um, believe it or not, before Look they got a there. CNC machine. So mm -hmm. it's all whipped together, folded up, all done there. Waterproof hinge, um, these are massive. If you've ever had a canopy with a piano hinge, you'll know when it's raining, water just drips down in. So that was a big, that was a big thing. It's one of the first things I noticed. 
I don't know what these handles are, but they're, they're pretty good quality. They're that cool whale tail that seems to be all the fashion. Um, we've just gone normal key locking because it's an old car. They will do central locking. They will wire it into your key. Uh, even if you've got an annoying car like an Amarok or something weird, they can make it work and they do. So they're flash. Uh, but yeah, these work really well. They can color match these or chrome them or whatever you want to do to suit your style. So inside, <coughs> I refit, um, I pretty much, like I said, I'd already built this, so I refit everything that we had in the old canopy because, yeah, it's cheaper than buying it again, obviously. So, uh, these are just a little a little Narva strip light. Uh, I think they're a marine light, so I just cruised through the catalogue until I found one that I liked. Um, it does two tones, so it's got a blue to keep the bugs out and not ruin your night vision, and then just a, a white light. At night, these are plenty bright enough. If you're in this area here, uh, they, they give you all the light you need. Yeah, wiring's run all through here, which is nice and neat, so that's just a hollow tube, which is perfect for, yeah, hiding wiring and whatnot. Yeah, double returns on these with the seal on the, on the gutter. You do see this done different ways, but um, look, I was more than happy with this. This thing hasn't leaked dust or water or anything. Uh, and Chris informs me that they've never had a problem with anything. Busted allows a really sleek, smooth finish, so when it's closed, it's, it's flush. Um, what have we got in here? So, I guess this sort of highlights... Um, how custom they can do. Yeah, how custom, or everything they can do. So, you, you've probably heard me banging on about it, but the benefit of going with a company like Profab is everything is custom. You're not dealing with, say, someone on the counter who's, uh, you know, ordering something from China, literally, or, or a factory that just gets mass produced. It's, it's literally, your, chances are you're talking to Chris, chances are he's the one out there doing some of these welds. So we basically had to fit everything around our design. This fridge couldn't go any other way, physically not possible with what we had. Again, we'd worked all this out before, um, but it took when we were actually putting it together to sort of put it all in here and then go, right, oh, how much room do we have? And on the topic of fridges, if you are trying to choose between a chest fridge or an upright fridge, yes, absolutely, upright fridges will save you room and they are easier to access, but you will lose so much room trying to of actual fridge space. And when you're, if you're planning a trip that's going to remote places like Cape York, etc., you want to have as big a fridge as possible to fill up with food, but also beer. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So yeah, the chest fridge is, is a no-brainer for me. If we had to put a little upright here, it would have been schmick. We would have had more room, but I don't like them for everything Charlotte just mentioned. Everything falls I, on you when you open the door. Yeah, they draw a lot more power. These are by far a better option. If we could have had this fridge that way, that would have been ideal. Because they do fridge slides. Profab do like, yeah, they tilt do the tilt, slides. tilt slides. Perfect. And, yeah. So if we could have done that, that would have been ideal, but it just wasn't possible with what our drawers and everything we would make yeah. work. So. We put it all in, worked out what room we had. Chris looked at it and came up with this idea, which essentially the fridge only opens to here because it hits on here, which is plenty enough room for us to get stuff in and out. Plus obviously the ARB fridges, you can pop the handle off if you need a bulk load or unload. So Chris came up with an idea of putting a shelf in here, um, which was, yeah, a massive benefit. It's probably one of my favorite things of the canopy, to be honest, because it, it just frees up. All this stuff was in that drawer, in some drawers here, and now it's up here. We've got heaps more room if you just want to throw something in I feel like we've quickly. got more cleaning stuff now as well because of yeah, it. Yeah, we do. We've got, yeah, we've, we can keep more stuff, just more tea towels, everything. Just land, Chopping random. boards. We used to have one chopping board. Now we've got, like, four. Yeah, exactly. Just little, um, yeah, little, things little comfort things, you know, that, yeah, that you need on the road. And, and now they're all right here, ready to go. Obviously, not everyone who buys something from Profab will get the luxury of standing next to Elliot while he does shit and telling him how to do it, like we did. <laughs> um, but you can request all this sort of stuff. So just having that extra little lip means things don't fall out. This is all within their, their realm and this is the stuff they do. So. But that is it, whoever, whether you go with Profab or someone else, asking for these lips is so essential because when you're going on corrugations, it's just all gonna go through. Yeah, it keeps everything in place. Again, there's some mint little weld porn. We'll get to that when we get around the other side. Yeah. Uh, electrics wise, was a bit of a nightmare. I was hoping I could just transfer everything off the old panel, which was a ply panel I built, uh, and just fit it all back on. But because People of how, can see that. yeah, yeah, you'll see that. You'll you see that the build. In, in the build. 
essentially I had to redo it, which I did and it, it fits, it's tight, but it fits. It's actually given us a little bit more room here. They basically cut this panel out just to take up that dead void in there. So there's only about 40 or 50 mil in behind. It's about 100 mil yeah, in behind. Yeah, it's about from there to there. Well, that's, just I think that's 40, space. so it's yeah. 80, 80 mil roughly. So everything slots in there. Um, so electrics wise, uh, I run all Red Arc gear. I personally think it's the best. Australian company, very rare in electronics. Very rare in a lot of things, to be honest. <laughs> really good uh, really good product, really good after sale service if you've ever had to use them. So this is a 1500 watt inverter, which is if it's far more than we'll ever need. Like you can run, you could run a bloody coffee machine or a small aircon on this, to be honest. Like, <laughs> we never even get close to it, but we've got the option there if we do need it. Yeah, it's it's basically just wired to a uh, 200 amp lithium battery, Invicta lithium battery. Again, big fan of them. They are on the more expensive side, but when you muck around with electrics and stuff, I think it's good to buy good gear. So realistically, we could have taken a 300 amp hour and used it. Yeah, we, we, we run a lot of stuff, which you'll see. So Example um, A being Starlink. <coughs> Example B, yeah. laptops, cameras. Yeah, we, we run a lot. The so frothers. I think if you're setting a car up, um, whatever you think you can get away with, just add 50%. Yeah. Like serious, because I was, I was always going to do 200 amps, but I was going to, I wasn't going to do lithium. I'm so glad I did lithium. I wish I had it gone slightly bigger. But um, we are running two fridges and a freezer. Three fridges, yeah. Oh, two fridges. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is just a, yeah, water pumps in the middle runs to this, which is just a little boat water tap that I found from Whitworth's, it folds up and down, brilliant, absolutely love Perfect, it. Yeah. Um, Topagi water meter, again, really good bit of gear that, so that's a little inline um, impeller, I suppose you call it, which essentially measures water flow as it goes out. I just run a bit. Up. We just got at the water tank today um, with how much you have left. Yeah, really good bit of gear. I highly recommend them. I think that's I think that's great. Uh, just your fuse block, all the regular normal accessories. I've got a work light on the car, which has got a little switch here. Um, Pantry, I guess. Oh, yeah. Bridge we've spoken about. Again, everything you see is just us making space work, which is important when you're on the road. Oils and soy sauce, which are pretty important. That's always just sits here. Just a drill for the trailer legs. Just stuff you need all the time. Even the Tupperware bottles stuck stuff down the back there. Everything's got a little spot. Uh, this was another brewing creation that was probably the most stressful out of this canopy build because we wanted something that was going to work for us, but we didn't have heaps of space. So. And this wasn't actually in the build videos really that much. Yeah, we it wasn't. Sort of start to get built, but then yeah. we were rushing for the boat. Yeah, th yeah, and this took a lot longer than we thought, just because we couldn't figure out. We were trying to make you know a square fit in a circle essentially. <laughs> so what we came up with, with a lot of Chris's help, was one big drawer which is just sort of pantry items. Yeah. Um, it's deep it's as... Don't it's look at it right now. It's a mess. So shout out to, this is a mess, sorry guys, Combi Coffee. Go buy some Combi Coffee. Um, but yeah, it's plenty of room. It, it fits way more than what we used to have in, in our bottom drawer, I suppose. Yeah. Um, the, we've, we've sort of tapered this and made it so that it's a bit easier to get to the fridge. So the other one, which you probably would have seen, was, was really tight, was really hard to use. This gives us a little bit more room. And then it also allowed us to put in a couple of shelves that go right to the back, so they give you that little bit extra wasted space. Um, so we have like, yeah, plates, mugs, percolator. Yep. Colouring. Spicy boys. Yep. And actually, surprisingly, you, I thought all this stuff was going to fall out, but it actually doesn't because the lip is so deep. And then obviously the spicy boys are on their phone, so they're not going anywhere. Yeah, nice big returns on it all. This is all nuts added in too, so um, all of this and this, all this can be removed if we wanted to. Probably never will, but we could. Uh, That's probably it for the kind yeah, of Yeah, big, oh yeah, big divider. You would have seen this in the, well, you'll see this in the, in the build videos. Um, yeah, obviously laser cut out, which looks really cool. Reduces weight, but gives you that that barrier, which is big because we did quite often lose things down here. Yeah. Which we don't anymore. And stuff just doesn't move around as much. Yeah. Um, into this side of the car now? Yeah, let's go around to this side. Uh, these are their roof racks, new style roof racks that they make. This is all, yeah, laser cut out, folded up. Looks really schmick. Look, I'm not just saying this because, because you know, we were working with them, but I, I actually think they're one of the better looking uh, roof racks on the market. 
sunk into that roof rack is a big 200 watt red arc solar panel. Uh, this is something they want to start doing more of. It's actually recessed below the line, so if I ever do want to put something up there long, you know, if you're a tradie or kayaks or whatever you got, uh, it sits below, so you can still put stuff up there. Um, this is this big panel is what the awning is mounted to, so it's great for mounting accessories, like our shovel, which goes on there. They're bolted into the frame, so it can be removed if you want, um, but obviously siliconed in to, to keep the water and dust out. This back side yeah. is just where the jerry can holder is. Did you use that, mate? Yeah, bloody hell. Uh, yeah, again, all made by Profad and powder coated. Yeah, way better than what we had. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I really like these. Uh, it's all lockable, bolts straight on. Yeah, looks really good. They look amazing. And they're just, yeah, they're they just, don't look as ugly. Like normally a jerry can hold on the back, jerry cans look so ugly. That basically hides it so well. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks really good. They add all the extra curves in to make it look nice. So <laughs> uh, definitely worth the money. Uh, yeah, same thing, toolbox this side, this just keeps... This one is chockers. Yeah, this one just keeps random stuff, so spare fan belts, uh, ratchet straps, more Makita tools, grinder, spare hoses. I think there's a, yeah, there's a tire repair kit in there. You should have Brake spares packs, of everything that you can. Packs, everything, anything you can think of. If it fits, it goes in. And that, it's literally the moral of our home. It is all important shit, but yeah. Uh, toolbox is, yeah, big tip. So, this side. This is more of our storage. Well, this is our storage side. Uh, this was a big one for me. I wanted a lockable compartment that runs right through that you would have seen on the other side. So this is welded inside, um, counts as a safe. It's all, yeah, it's all lockable. You, you can't get into it. That lid basically slides out. They've done the cool profab etch on there for us, which I think is pretty cool. The shelf here again, so we used to run a bit of a shelf in the old canopy, which was really handy for uh, thin things like cookers, uh, solar panels, that sort of stuff. The shelf we had was, was pretty crap, to be honest. <laughs> and so, it just was, went the whole way across to above the fridge. Yeah, it, it went right through. Things would go that way, this way, they'd fall out. It just, it just didn't work. So uh, this is all built around our stuff. So again, this is, why, this is why you go to someone like Profab because they can literally take what you want to fit, measure it, and then make it fit to that. So up here we keep the cooker, solar panels, extra solar leads, there's a fire pit up there. Uh, what are resistance bands? That's... <laughs> the workout stuff. Yeah, workout oh, ground stuff. mat. Did you say ground, ground mat? Ground mat, yeah. And on the topic of fire pit, we highly recommend the Snow Peak fire pit is the one we have. It's great, you can cook on it. It's got so many different accessories that come with it. Yeah. And it just has been absolutely thrown around for a year and doesn't even look like it at all, so. Yeah, yeah, Snow Peak's good gear. Um, um, expensive, but again, well worth the money, well especially worth. if you're using it all the time. And on the topic of solar panels, whatever you think you need, yeah, get more. yeah, yep. Yeah, solar's a hard one. Like, we've got 200 watts on the roof, um, but obviously, you don't want to leave your car in the sun. And being flat on the roof, it only works, you know, this much of the day. So, um, spare solar and solar blankets are really good. Yeah, whatever you think you need, get an extra 150 watt panel or whatever, because you can never have too much, especially if you sat up somewhere in the hot climate and you're going to be there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, this little table here. So this, you probably, if you've been following us for a while, you would have seen me use this. This clips onto the side of the ute. We had to modify this to make it a little bit different. We'll go through that. You can see that. Put a clip of it. But these are just drop side, uh, like tray drop side hinges. So like, like what comes on a Triple M or a factory Toyota tray, they just clip in and out. So this was our way to make this work on this setup because it doesn't have the same tray edge that we used to use. And because we didn't have enough room to do a slide out table on the other side under the pantry. Yeah, and you couldn't get a big enough one. And this table's huge. Which we love. Yeah, we loved it. And then um, the brackets for it were Chris's idea again to slide it just. Yeah, so, yeah, so to, yeah, we had to store it. That was, that was our big thing because it just, it sat up on that other shelf in the old canopy and was a nightmare so <laughs> yeah Chris came up with this and said well why don't we make a little a little bracket here to, to slide it in uh, which works phenomenally it's really really good mm. you, you don't even really know it's there it slips, slips in and out it's nice and quick and easy to do uh, these two drawers are the 1070 drawers I think they are look at that there 35 bits 
So these are uh, what would be sold for 200 series. So they're just just a metre long, just over a metre long, something like that, about 1100. Um, massive, they're plenty, plenty of room for what we do, especially now we've got more room on the other side. This one's cooking, uh, cooking utensils, so pots, pans, wash up, gas, Touch big oven. camp oven up the back. Yeah, okay, highlighters, that sort of stuff. So this is a, another pantry drawer. Slash. Uh, slash anything drawer. It's got the shower, it's got, might be a couple spares in the back there, because. That's where yeah. all the spares go now, spare bearings and everything. Yeah, spare hubs, spare radiator, bloody hoses. Um, anything Shane tries to say, we're taking this too, get stuffed in the back there. Yeah, anything you might need, you know. But yeah, food, like this holds plenty of food, like we can really load it up. Every time we go shopping, Shane's like, this is going to be the time. You're not going to fit it all this time. Yeah, it's only, it's only happened once too, which yeah. is pretty impressive. Pretty good. <laughs> that was a big shock. <laughs> uh, the annoying thing about drawers is obviously you lose this space. So these had to be spaced up 40 mil to clear. But what can you do? There's no better way that I've found to store this much crap and have it organised. In the front, so this is where the battery is in behind there. Uh, and then there's a little divider and in the middle is where the water pump and air compressor is. I've just, just run a little four litre per minute Seaflow water pump, just a pressure pump. It's perfect for running out of that tap. Air compressor is just a single ARB um, with the manifold kit for your lockers and it has got the little four litre air tank which is not that great on a single compressor. I, I sort of knew that it wasn't going to be but now that I've been using it I'm kind of like well, there's not much point. Anyway it's there if we need it. <laughs> Oh, so in this section, like obviously you can see we've got the chainsaw, just, shoes yes. are stuffed all down the back down there. Yeah, storage wise we we pushed everything that way a little bit to give us a bit more room. Um, so yeah, we managed to get most of our shoes down in there. Just Shane's huge hiking boots. Except for so these fit. big dogs don't no fit. <laughs> Chainsaws are forever the most awkward shaped bit of gear that you need to have. <laughs> And you do need them, believe me, I reckon it's a must. But it kind of fits there pretty well. Two chairs go in um, here. Recovery kit. Again, essential. Yeah. Bulky, heavy. Massive. Used very rarely, very essential. But yeah, if you need it, you need it, and you don't want to not have it. Uh, awning room. That we've never used. We've never used, may get rid of, haven't decided. We used to have a navigator table if you've also been following our, all our videos. Shout out to those regulars. You know we had a debate about the table. Yeah. We did get rid of the table. We don't have a walk. That yeah. was the debate. Yeah, we, we gotta get a walk now because that was the trade-off for it. So <laughs> navigator table is really good, highly recommend. It is good. It was just a little bit too much for the amount of stuff that we have. Yeah. That's a little ARB table, so just a small um yes. I don't know what you call those. There's a word for it. A camp. Aluminium. We'll show you. Accordion. Anyway. Sure. Good little table, tiny, fits in here yeah, perfect. It's so good. Again, this I don't even think that was planned, but it just worked out really well. Uh, yoga mat, a few weights right. and things like that. That's probably it for in the canopy. That's pretty well it, yeah. So, Again, we've got a light on this side. Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd split this into two videos, uh, just in the canopy alone, in case that's what you're interested in, but we're also going to do a really quick car walk through two of inside the car etc so if you want to see that as well keep watching for part two so yeah, yeah. so if you're not going to watch the what we've got in the car episode then thanks for watching give us a subscribe if you don't already yeah i'll put the little subscribe thing here for you to just see yep um and yeah obviously said it a number of times big thanks to profab mm. we did pay for this canopy so it wasn't like a give you a free shit to talk good stuff about us we paid for it but after working with them and seeing the quality of the work that they come up with i would 100 percent work with them again i would any canopy i would I, I need in the future i'll be going down to tassie to get it um on that note everyone majority of people are on the mainland it's just how australia works Tasmania is not that far away. If you are looking for a custom canopy, do your research, which I'm sure you would have. You'll find the main brands. Can be quite expensive. Call Chris at Profab. You'll, you'll probably be fairly surprised. Uh, Very surprised at the price. Yeah, look, they are really reasonable for, for what they do. And as you can see, it's quality. But uh, yeah, Chris uh, Chris Tanner and Chris McGrath, they're the two Chris's there. 
give them a ring, chances are you'll be dealing with the guys who actually build your canopy. So, mm. um, yeah, can't stress enough and can't thank them enough. You don't need a house deposit to buy a canopy. No, that's right. This, yeah, th these are a, very probably, affordable. probably a lot more affordable for people. Than I think people, people would realize. be surprised. Just make the call, give them a call, and you can thank us later. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tell them we sent you, live and affordable. Yeah, we don't get any commission or anything, which is nice for them tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for watching. Bye. Um, see you in the next one. See you in the next one.